Welcome to another episode of Team Anywhere, where CEOs, leaders, and experts at building teams, companies, organizations, and amazing cultures share how to lead from anywhere in the world. I'm your co-host on the East Coast, Judy Bianco Mathis. And I'm your co-host on the West Coast, Mitch Simon. And we invite you to join us to Team Anywhere. How can you use the move to virtual to create a culture based on getting better every day and having fun? On today's podcast, Mark Reifenrath, CEO and founder of SpinUtech, a national digital agency, shows us how. On today's podcast, you'll learn how to make your employees' first day their best day ever, how to prioritize development so your clients win by everyone getting better every day, and how to make it easier to provide great feedback so you can team anywhere. Hello and welcome to another episode of Team Anywhere. This is Mitch Simon, your co-host on the West Coast. And on the East Coast, we have an amazing co-host, Dr. Virginia Bianco Mathis. Ginny, how are you today? Oh, I am actually very happy. It's a Friday. It's raining in D.C. Raining in D.C., but you got your technology working. But even <laughs> more important, we have an amazing guest, and I would love for you to introduce today's guest. Oh, I'm very excited. So Mark Reifenrath is the CEO of Spinu Tech, a company he started in college and has now grown into a multinational digital agency with more than 170 team members and locations in five cities. Mark's focus is building partnerships and solving problems. He's passionate about culture and believes it has been and continues to be essential not only to spin you tech success, but the success of other clients as well. To the point, there is a motto that they have in their company called Get Better Every Day. Mark gets better every day by learning from his team members, listening to a lot of podcasts, which means listening to himself because he's on a lot of podcasts, and consuming 30 to 40 articles and blog posts a week. Spin you tech has been designated as a Google Premier Partner and one of the top 500 U.S. fastest growing companies. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Super excited to be here and honored as well. Oh, thanks so much. And let's just start by talking about Tech and how is it different from other companies? Why is this company and your team partners unique? Yeah, so there's tons of digital agencies out there. Now, the question I would ask back to you is, can you name another all digital agency that's even over 50 people? And most people can't even in the industry or CMOs. So it's a diverse industry, tons of people in the space, but we feel that we're different because we do care about culture and core values. And we just kind of approach it a little bit differently. We focus on hiring the best talent and we go deep on each team. So we don't just have generalists in digital. We actually get people that are very specialized in what they do. So if you think of search engine optimization, we might have a team of roughly 15, I think, and they would have a team member that is really great with on-site SEO, off-site, technical, maps, and local stuff. So depending on what our clients need, we have that specialist for it, and it does bring a different level of sophistication to it. So I like to say we do things at a more sophisticated level than most clients would expect from an agency, which is good for them. So our team is really our biggest asset. And that is something that we put a lot of energy and effort into that does distinguish us from other agencies. Exactly. And it also affects your recruiting, which we'll talk about in a bit. So your passion is the culture, as you stated, and you talk about having three pillars. Can you talk about those? I would say what we really focus on is our core values. So we've got four, I would say. We get better every day. We do the right thing. We over me and we own it. And those are really how we hire and fire. Hopefully you don't have to fire if you hire properly. It's how we manage. It's how we solve problems. It's just the framework for everything that we do. So if you are going to hire somebody, you want to make sure that they're not just culturally aligned, but also aligned with our core values. And so... It's just a thread of every day at Spinny Tech. It's our part of our DNA. So on Slack, we have a shout out channel and that goes back to our core values. And so when somebody does something well, 
you would say, Jenny did great with this client and displayed we over me or we own it or we get better every day. And they use an actual example. And so we're not just putting these on the wall as a vanity and saying, here's our core values and here's our culture. So what I love to say, and this is very true for us, we don't have an aspirational culture or core values. We have a lived set of core values and a lived culture. A lot of companies aspire to be what they write on paper on their website. And we truly can say we live it. Oh, I can see that. And as you said, that's almost a criteria every day for making a decision, for being on a team, for shouting out to somebody. It always goes back to those four values. Absolutely. That's beautiful. So given that, one of them, the Get Better 24, talk about that because you have tons of examples. One of them (laughs) is the one you just gave, but what are some others? Yeah, so we are a digital agency. We're based off of billable time. So what we like to do is allocate 34 hours a week of billable time for a typical strategist. And those six hours that are left over are what we call your GB24, your Get Better 24. Eight of those are dedicated to self-development. So we've listened to the employment market. And years ago, I mean, this has been going on for a while, but a lot of people are asking, what do you offer team members? I say team members instead of employee, which we can go into as well. But potential team members are saying, what do you offer for self-development? Right. And so this is our answer to that. It's dedicated time to get your Google certification or your Facebook certification or whatever certification you might need. Or this individual, what you need versus what somebody else needs are very different. And so we want to not just do peanut butter spread across the board of here's what the training we're going to give everybody. It's what does this team need? What does this team member need? And make sure we're providing those opportunities. And sometimes they can just do that on their own. And we do look at it on a weekly basis, but it's not intended that you have to use it within that week. So you might carve out a morning. Some of the certifications are going to take longer. Yeah. So why would you do this? Well, it's going to attract great talent. It's going to retain great talent. And then it's going to have the other effect on clients. It's going to attract great clients and it's going to retain great clients. So we don't just want to do digital marketing. We want to do it at the best possible level we can. I got a great question for you, Mark, because you talk about living your values. So I want to understand how you do this. There are so many companies that, in fact, I work with where they say, we want to offer our team members great opportunities to grow. And we're offering them great opportunities to grow. And then what their team members are doing is they're signing up for courses, but then they don't go to them because they're also committed to the work. So I'm just wondering, how have you been able to influence your team members to take those six hours a week to actually get better? Well, so first of all, in our industry, a lot of agencies, you're working 50, 60 hours a week, simply by just saying 34 hours of billable time is the max you can have. Now, are there weeks you might go over that? Sure. But restricting that and keep in mind, it's really hard to have the whole team perfectly at 34 hours of billable time, right? There's new clients, new projects, it ebbs and flows. So not everybody's at that max, but at least trying to put a system in place to make sure you're carving out time within a normal work week, not above and beyond, it's more powerful. And and so I think some of our team members do still struggle to find that time. I mean, time can disappear quickly, Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to lead by example. So it's not just words on a wall. It's not just words on our website. It's talked about constantly We have a dedicated team member towards our culture. And then that also provides some of those training opportunities. And getting Uh, better doesn't always have to be directly related to work. There's the mental health component. There's the physical health component. We need everybody to be holistically in their best place to be a top performer. And so investing into that is a big deal. The story maybe I would share or analogy I would share is a manufacturing company, their biggest asset are the tools that make whatever they make. And they invest on going into those to maintain them and make sure that they're at optimal performance levels at all times. Our biggest asset is our people. It's our human capital. We need to invest in our people to keep them healthy, growing, getting better so that they're not going to fall behind. And as a company, we're not going to fall behind because we're not investing in our largest asset. Mitch, you and I were going to the same place. Mark, you talk a lot about then pushing one another, even if it gets uncomfortable sometimes, and being a high feedback 
organization. Could you share how that looks like? Sure. A high feedback organization, easier said than done. Even if we say this constantly, it's not going to happen as frequently as we would like. But if you don't talk about it, it's not going to happen. So day one, you're a new team member at Spinu Tech. That's part of my onboarding. I sit with each new team member, do a cultural and core values overview. But one of the pieces of that is saying, okay, in every one of our core values, there's an accountability component. There's a team component. There's feedback, getting better. But what does that look like when in reality? And what's the elephant in the room with that? It's I'm in a meeting and somebody didn't do their best and I noticed it. What do I do? Do I just shut up, walk out of the room or turn off the Zoom and leave it? Or do I hook up with them afterwards and say, hey, I'm going to share this with you from a place of helping you get better. Are you open to this feedback? So number one, you've got to get permission both ways. Love I'm going to say, hey, guys, I would love your feedback after this podcast. How did I do? Yeah, uh, I'm going to give you permission for that feedback. If we do that and it's coming, attack the problem, not the person. That's a big right. statement. So I'm going to say it again. Attack the problem, not the person. And if everybody has that attitude, we check our egos at the door and we all want to get better. Well, now that feedback is easier to give and receive. And sometimes it's still going to sting when somebody tells yeah. you you're not the best at something. But we're all very reflective. And so once we get that, we can do better. And so it's just trying to, one, do that by example, and then, two, making sure that the team is following through on that. So that's how you try to enforce that. Yeah, Mark, I love that setup. I haven't heard that that setup, which is, hey, we're going to have this meeting. And at the end of this meeting, I really want you guys to give me some feedback. It, it kind of alleviates the suffering ahead of time <laughs> and, and from both sides, right? Because I might be uncomfortable giving feedback and we're all uncomfortable getting feedback. Let's just be honest. (laughs) So I would love that. Do you have any stories of Mm -hmm. some incredibly transformational feedback that was actually given that really helped some of your employees? I know I'm putting you on the spot there. No. So there's a story I'll share. I'll redact names and time. Sure. There was an individual, recent college grad, and we knew they were incredibly intelligent. They were a great cultural fit. But they were kind of going through that post-college transition, probably still living with some roommates, maybe partying a little bit. So you just kind of knew there were days where they weren't their best. And I just pulled that individual aside and said, hey, bud, I know where you can go. Do you agree with that? Like, you have the potential to be amazing. You've got so much upside. I'm here to get that out of you. And so I just said, here's some things I'm noticing that I think are holding you back from that. So it's up to you now. You're going to take a right turn or a left turn. What do you want to do? And I tell you what, rocket fuel. Yes. <laughs> this individual responded within a couple months, changed the living situation, cut all that noise out. So this person has grown tremendously and still has so much upside. That's the beauty of it. They're doing so many great things and they're all in on our culture. So we've had a conversation post that reflecting and kind of joking, like, remember when we had to have that awkward conversation? But man, what if I as a leader didn't do that? What right. happens? You know, because oh, those first oh. few years are so critical for that growth of the individual and it's kind of setting the tone for who they are as a professional. And so those for me are huge moments. Like what's the pride in my role? It's those moments where you've impacted somebody at a great level. Oh, totally. That is marvelous. And you showed faith in that person. And think if you had done it the traditional way. You've been here about six months and it's time for a review and you're not doing too well. The worst thing is if you go to review and they're hearing something for the first time that's negative, you already messed up. So that in the moment feedback is so critical, hard to give, hard to live, but you've got to do that. And once you train that muscle the right way, it gets easier and easier, both to give and receive. Mark, how did you train your muscle? Because when I teach these kinds of things, I'm sure Mitch does too. How did you learn that? Well, I learned a lot of it the hard way. (laughs) So you maybe fail. So fail, first attempt in learning, right? Leadership is, there's a component that you're born with for sure. But then it's that EQ component of reading the room, reading the person. Because feedback, the way I would give it to each of you is going to look different. If I've worked with you for a while, I'm going to know what works for each of you. I could say the same words and you're going to both walk away with completely different things. That ongoing training and EQ development of what each individual needs 
is very important. And so it took a lot of time and a lot of failures to understand what was working, what wasn't. And then when you find some things for yourself that work, you start to repeat that. For me, it's that permission thing too, just starting to say, hey, is this okay if I approach this with you? And I mean, who doesn't want to get better, right? Yeah, I love that context. Go ahead, Mitch. Great. I wanted to specifically on the virtual and hybrid piece, one of your values is we over me. And we just have to address this in the room. How do you do we over me when me is not close to, and you don't even have an office, do you? We have five physical offices. Okay. So how are you doing we over me? So we over me is really intended more about being a team player. I would say all of the core values, the culture, how do you have what we had pre-COVID? That's super difficult because we were all together for the most part. We had some remote team members, but that definitely has changed since COVID. And, and I would say for the positive from a talent perspective for us, because we've gotten access to so many people that never would have known us and we would have never known them. So that's awesome. But you're right. The physicality of being in an office together, the in and out of a meeting, the water cooler talk. And so what I say is when somebody starts that first 100 days, their journey of that first 100 days is so critical. We've got an amazing program for that, getting that DNA injected. But I tell them right now, listen, we as a company, we're going to pour a lot into you. But it is so critical that you as an individual reach out to other team members as well that you do work with or don't to just get to know them. Don't talk about work. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about COVID. Just get to know who the person is and build that bond. Because when we go to war, when we go on the field of whatever we're going to do that day, I got to know how you're going to react when you get stressed. What are the little twitches that you have that I know when to jump in and help you? And so... Here's the other thing. During COVID times, anything virtual, the shelf life of it's very short. So we all did the virtual happy hours in the beginning of COVID, and that worked for a little bit. Right. Then people start to disappear. Then we did trivia. Then we did whatever. And so that individual we have dedicated to the culture, she's done a great job of thinking of new things. The team did something really awesome. They did a virtual cooking show. And this is really personal. You went into their kitchens and we did a turkey and a side and a a cocktail. And I didn't get to listen to it live, but I watched it later. And it was so awesome because you saw a deeper level of personality in that person. And it just humanizes us. Yes. And so I think we all have to work a little bit harder right now to bring that team mentality together. And I think all those things are displaying me over me of I care about the team more than my individual self, meaning I'm not going to do something to undercut somebody to get that raise or that promotion. You don't have to give a promotion. If you want a promotion, if you're already doing the job, it's really easy to get it. And Uh, a lot of people think they deserve something before they're actually doing it. And some of these things all kind of come together when you think about that. Right. And it sounds like you've created a space for people to share that, put it on the table. And you do that, you role model it when you say, I'd like to share something with you. So they hear that you do that, and that obviously trickles down. Well, you've referred to it twice now. So let's talk about this quite incredible process you have for hiring people. Yes. So there's a lot of steps. It is long. So the hiring process, I would love to be shorter. But on the flip side, it is what it is with intention. So we get banged up a little bit on Glassdoor sometimes with people that say it was too long and blah, blah, blah. We only hire 0.06% of applicants, which will also frustrate people. But listen, we want the right fit. And so screening call number one, no ego, no arrogance, cultural fit. Then we start doing team interviews. They're doing the same thing, reading all those things and doing a skill set review as well. By the time they get to me, final interview, I only ask one question. But it's a real gut check on their cultural fit. I'm going to assume that the team has done an amazing job filtering everything else. My one question, you guys are going to love this. Yes, I'm waiting. What is your walk-up song when you wake up in the morning and walk to your desk? What's that playing in your head? And there's no wrong answer. It's just thinking on your feet, show a little bit of personality. And pre-COVID, we were going to play that on their first day when they walked into the office. Oh, I love it. Now we have a Spotify playlist. It's a people reminisce about, well, what was your walk up song in your interview? And, so, funny. And stuff. And so it's a memorable thing that's a little bit different. But again, it sets that tone of who we are. They're starting to virtually get the scratch and sniff of what our culture is. Yeah. And 
I like to display that I'm cool having fun. Like <laughs> there's this mentality of we want people to understand we can work hard and play hard. I think people look at that wrong. Work hard, play hard. I think you can do it together. And mm-hmm. I want to show them that right away by example. And, and so when we're having fun, we're eliminating stress. So the interview process is about, it's two ways. We want them to know who we are and feel it. And I say this, I don't want a yes. I want a hell yes. Now, once they've been hired, we've got that first 100 days. I want people to have the best first day they have ever had. Somebody is going to call them that night or talk to them, a roommate, a spouse, significant other, a parent. Hey, how was your first day? Oh my gosh, you would not believe it. The best. They did this. They did that. It was amazing. I am just so excited. And so that is so critical to sink your teeth in from a culture perspective as soon as possible. Okay, please describe how do you create the best first day ever? So there is a pretty good schedule on there. They're interacting with different team members. It's not about filling out all the paperwork and everything. It's meeting team members, getting some overviews, my in-person lunch or virtual lunch. I try to do that cultural onboarding and overview day one if possible. So it's really just getting them warmed up. The other thing we do is they're going to have shipped to them all their equipment if they're virtual right now. Right, We're going to get them that equipment before they start. They're getting a little swag box and some stuff with some logoed up stuff. And sometimes we try to personalize that. I love the whole concept of what's a $20 or less indulgence that you have. A Snickers bar, Twizzlers, whatever, right? Yes, yes. Um, Let's hit them up with that. And not just on day one, but you had a bad day because we all have bad days, right? Let's hit them with that again. And so it's personalized. So we try to not just have it this robotic approach. It's how do we kind of personalize it to that individual as well? And Mark, you mentioned that you have a person who stays on top of this, right? So there are two individuals. There's one that is in charge of the culture, (laughs) making sure that we're doing events, health and wellness, all that stuff. Franny is dedicated to that recruiting onboarding process as well. So another thing we do is handwritten notes at 30 days. They're going to talk to different leaders, of course, over the course of time. So she's helping facilitate and schedule that. The random team member meetups. We've got a mentor program going on now with somebody who's been here a while. So there's a lot of moving parts. But the concept of that 100 days and reason we need somebody behind that is there are so many moving parts that are so critical to getting the DNA injected as quickly as possible. Exactly. What would you say is one of the more creative things, now you didn't mention the cooking, that you have done now for the virtual? So let's say it's going to be hybrid of some kind going forward. You said you're trying to work that through. What are one or two things that you say, all right, this is what we really need to do now, given how important culture is, what we're going to do? Well, I think we have to figure out in this new model, how do we still get people together? So this year, we've got a budget set aside for bringing the teams, not team as one at once together, but bring teams. So the SEO team, the content team, having a couple of days together in person. Great. Moving forward, if we can reduce our square footage as leases come up for renewal, I'd like to take several hundred thousand dollars of that and apply it towards bringing people together as well. Yeah. I think the energy, when you're with people, you can feel it. It's like thick in the air. Yeah. The collaboration is happening. And so we need to create more of those opportunities. So that would be one thing. The other thing, I think it's just in the interaction. So when we are together, again, modeling that having fun mentality, work hard, play hard. We were just in Oklahoma City with a client and there was five of us maybe there was a trend I saw on TikTok. We were going to do it in the lobby of the hotel, but there was a bunch of people in there. So we went to the workout room <laughs> and we shot this video and I use that in my weekly video for the team. Oh, it's, fabulous. It's different things like that. In my mind, it's like, what's the craziest, silliest thing we could do? And you try to pull it off just to keep it fresh. That's perfect. All right. That leads me to my question. And you've been really studying this on yourself and this laboratory of a company you have around what makes a good leader. I mean, you talked about mediocrity. It's not acceptable. What else? Well, there's so many different ways you can define that. It's kind of like a coach. There's different styles that work. And it also kind of depends on the team you're managing and working with. I'm big on servant leadership. I view our accountability chart from the bottom up. I'm on the bottom helping support everybody. As far as other leaders... I need to pour into them and let them pour into their team. So it just keeps overflowing the champagne stack, right? I think it's giving each leader a little bit of freedom to lead in their own way, but yet 
I would say the, the foundational thing that's in there is we have to lead by our core values. And as a leader, I look at myself, I have to have a perfect record with our core values. If I yes. don't, then I'm telling the team it's okay to not always do the right thing, to not always get better. Yeah. So it's important that every leader tries to be as perfect as possible. And we're human. We're going to mess up. We're going to have moments. <laughs> but are you going to own that moment? going back to the core value and say where you went wrong. Most people are not born leaders. And a lot of organizations put somebody that's great at what they do because they're great. That should make them the leader. Well, that right. doesn't always mean that they're great at being a leader. They may be really great at their expertise. And so are we providing them opportunities to get feedback, to train them? We're big on 360 reviews at all levels. So just getting that constant and continuous feedback. But We've also provided training for some leaders that's been pretty transformational. Team member number one, he wasn't a leader for a long time. He's still with us. He went to a local community college, got some great training. And he'll tell you, I've told him, dude, I don't know what switch went off, but you're a great leader. Congrats, kudos. Like, I want you to model to other leaders in the organization. And he'll say like, yeah, I know I struggled with that before. I think it was some of that training that I've applied. And so... Just to see that maturity come through and development is so rewarding. And I didn't do anything. I mean, he had to invest into that training. You know, you help give the nudges, but they have to really take it to that next level. So that's what I would say for us, some of the things we've done to make a good leader. Well, you nudged it and then you acknowledged it. I've heard you say other things like don't lie to yourself. Biggest lies we tell are the lies we tell ourselves. And we all do that far too much. (laughs) Right. Don't make timely decisions, even if they're wrong. Yeah. I think most people, when you're leading them, they want that timely decision. Think about it. They're taking six months to make this decision. You kind of almost forget about it. <laughs> and so in COVID, the beginning, it was a Sunday morning and I read some news and it was like, okay, we have to plan by the end of the day to go remote for Monday. And we pulled it together. Was it perfect? No, but it worked. We didn't really have any hiccups. We adapted as things kept changing. And because the team was feeling uncomfortable, I would say that's something in the last two years that we've all learned is if you don't talk about it, you don't address it, you're creating a stress point. And so Uh we just tried to do simple things like we're not going to talk about going back to the office until Jan 1 of 21. Okay, it's July. I don't have to worry about this now until then. And even then we realized as it got closer, people were like, well, does that mean we're going back in Jan 1? We're not going to talk about it until the end of Q1. (laughs) Finally, we just said, listen, we're not going to talk about it until we talk about it. It is this until it changes. So don't worry about it. Parents, they've got kids going back to school after coming out of COVID. We had a meeting early in the morning. We said (laughs) some simple things. Listen, we know this is going to create new stress for you. So here's how I feel about as a leader. You want to wake up at five, work five to seven, get the kids up, get them fed, dressed, drive them to school, come back. You're back on at nine. Cool. You want to pick them up at 3.30. Cool. Try to just do this for us. Don't have it be disruptive to your teammates or our clients and get in your hours. We have a saying, GSD, get stuff done. You can change stuff with a different word. Uh Uh, So GSD. If you GSD, we got no problem. And just removing that stress point. I love that. So making those decisions fast and trying to stay ahead of potential stress points or friction points. Well, you've also said it's important to be passionate, which you are. (laughs) Humble and thankful. And you're amazing. How can our listeners follow you and the great work you're doing? Yeah, so I'm trying to stay active on LinkedIn. So my name is Mark Reifenrath. Mark with a C and then Reifenrath, R-E-I-F-E-N-R-A-T-H. If you look that, there's only one of me out there, I think. Uh, (laughs) LinkedIn is great. And then we try to put a lot of this stuff on our website, spinutech.com, S-P-I-N-U-T-E-C-H.com. This is something, obviously, I am very passionate about. I think with having a great culture, it's a differentiator. And it's what makes our team really yeah. good at the digital marketing work that we do. It makes us better at driving leads, which is what we're really good at for right. our clients. And so some people, I think, discount culture and core values. And for us, this is the fuel behind the amazing work that our team does for our clients. And so to me, it is the primary thing you've got to focus on because everybody can say they're great at SEO or content, paid search, whatever. Well, what's the differentiating factor then? It's the people behind it. That's our yep. biggest asset. And we're going to invest in them to make them the best they can be. And Mitch, his favorite word is yes. Yes. Wow. Now that we know where to find you, 
I just want to recap. This is an amazing podcast. Here's a couple of things that you said, which everyone should walk away with. First of all, when you're doing your shout outs, shout out your team members with a specific example. 34 six. Make sure your people work 34 hours, but make sure they spend six hours a week getting better. Get better every day. Ask for feedback ahead of time. That sets you up from a real successful feedback session, so it makes it less uncomfortable for both parties. Create your best first day ever. Find out what makes that person special, if they like Snickers or who knows what, Nutella. Make sure you send that to them. Kill your leases, which I think all my clients who are in real estate are going to hate that one. But use that money to bring your teams together. Lead by your core values. You as the leader need to be 100% in integrity with your core values. And then finally, get S done, GST. Have that flexibility to tell your employees like, hey, it's okay. You have that flexibility. Just get those hours in. This has been a pure pleasure and really a great experience speaking to. And I really do say this sincerely with a true leader. And I think it's really cool is that when you're choosing a vendor, and especially in something as important as helping your business stay top of mind and having a great brand, you really want to choose someone where that everyone in the company really loves what they're doing. So with that, I wanted to thank you, Mark, Jenny. Thank, thank you so much for being a great co-host. And for our listeners, thank you for choosing such a great thing to listen to. Please give us five stars. Share this with your friends, your family, your colleagues. And we'll see you next time on the next episode of Team Anywhere. Anywhere.